this morning, the crew is coming to cut a big hole in this wall and we're gonna find out how much space is behind it. We did do some pilot holes and it seems to be that we have about 24 to up to 30 inches of space in part of this wall to put additional cabinets. All right, the guys are here. We are getting ready to cut a part of the wall out to see what's back there. I'm gonna try to sneak inside with them or I'll at least have the door, th the camera through the door. All right, so what we have now is the wall has been cut. We're gonna do this in a couple areas and I say we lightly, I'm just watching. But they've been using a level line so that they can at least put this piece back in until the actual construction starts. The studs are over here. Say goodbye to the wallpaper. You think that wallpaper is here? Now, isn't that neater than what I did over in Groton to see the brick wall? <laughs> To the sledgehammer. <laughs> Yeah, for the vapor barrier. All right, let me show you how much space I have extra. And there's cold air coming in here. So I hope I don't drop my phone. But there's a bump out here, and this is where you, I'll show you there is a, I think they've had a Bible on the cabinet. And this deeper area below, is where we kept our, our wood and things. So I have a huge cabinet over here, all the way up and down that is usable. Over on this side is the fireplace, which is painted. So we're wondering now if this was an exterior wall at one point. I only have a little space, but that means I can at least increase the size of this a bit. I was excited to find we have some space here. One thing that's a little frustrating, but it's no big deal, is I'm really not getting a clear indication of the age and when additions were put on but I don't see any markings on wood or anything that will help me figure this out. Other than, once again, the fireplace is painted on the outside. It's painted all the way around. So we're thinking at one point, this was an exterior chimney. And maybe this butler's pantry was added on when the porch was put on. I'll show you over here. It could have been part of this rustic porch that we're doing over. 
but I thought for sure I'd be able to piece this together, but it still is confusing me. I wanted to do a little peek at my gardens here. I found out the other day from the previous owner that I have a gooseberry bush here. I'm gonna think it's this one. They said it was under the garage window. There's a lot of beautiful plants also in this garden. I do have a professional landscape gardener coming by in two weeks just to look at this project with me. Um, I had a couple questions of some things that I do want moved that I'm concerned they're not getting enough light and sun. And even though I have enough knowledge to make it work, I want to have somebody who has a lot of knowledge to make it even better. But um, look at all of the, the lilies popping up here. The sun's coming up. Wow, I'm looking across the way and it looks like part of the mountains got snow last night. We did not. That's a really cool, I don't know if I could zoom in with this new camera. Let's see how this works. I thought I'd share what I'm doing this morning. It's Sunday morning and I'm doing a little cleanup out front. We have some bushes here in the front of the house that can take over. These bushes actually self root and I've been cutting them and cleaning them up. I left a couple shoots just so I can show you. Oh, look who's coming. So over here, like I mentioned, these trees love to reach out and keep growing, kind of like forsythia and other plants. So this particular stem or limb is actually starting this root, which will then start another and keep going. My goal is going to be cutting a lot of the lower based ones, which I've already done. One, you can kind of see it helps make some space under the bushes for cleanup, whether it's leaf blower or raking, but also it's going to help prevent these from touching the ground and self-rooting. So I'm almost done here, but I did get a lot off already. Here's another, this is the one I can show you. This limb right here, if you follow it down, was able to touch the ground and now it's self-rooted. So this is all gonna come up. And right now this is on top of the weed block. So I will definitely move all this and I'll be cutting these lower limbs. Even these will get cut because they're so close to the ground. You know, if they get held down by snow, they'll start rooting next year. The sun's coming out, it's beautiful. One thing the landscaper was saying, when he goes in with the leaf blower, all this stuff is going to lift, which is true because it's exactly what happened when Ben and I started to do some cleanup here this spring. And that's one of the reasons I'm taking this up. And then the other is it's, I just want to, you know, start fresh here. Well, I did my cutting and this is how I get distracted from one project to another, which is a good thing because it's getting some things done. But over here on the side of the house, we do have another gate and it's being blocked by, let's see here. I'll get over here closer. It's not easy to access it because of overgrown bushes once again. So this one, I'm going to cut back some of these limbs so that this gate is a little more easily accessible. My goal for what I'm gonna be starting with is just to open up paths and I want to make some pocket gardens and just give it a fresh start for this year until I see what's growing where. So I won't be digging anything up or moving anything at this point, but you can see this is overgrown from the gate. 
and through. And Ben's bringing the gator over so I can toss a lot of that in to go out back. Here I go. Well, that's better. Now I have more of a path. I'll trim some more of this back later in the season. I don't want to make it completely open and exposed right now. And here on the this bush here, let's see here. I'm just going to cut some of these back right to another, I'm going to call it a sucker. Let's see here. So um, it's on this one. I just don't want it to go back into the path. So there we go. And I think I'll even do this one that's walk, going into the path just a little bit. And this one is hitting me in the face too. So I'm just going to, let's see, I think I'll do it here at the joint. And let's see, I don't want to over, over cut. So I think that's going to be good here. Some controlled chaos. I did some lower limbs also that were coming out here that you can almost see how far out they were. They were touching here on the ground. So I cleared that up and then we'll bark mulch and edge all of this. Much better. I'm gonna to have to clean up some of the frozen tips here of the boxwoods. But all in all, we're getting there. Plenty of time. Ben's been cleaning against this wall here. And luckily we have a lunch planned with some friends in in uh, New Boston. We're going to go visit and I'm looking forward to that. So I'm probably going to finish up here now and go clean up and get ready for lunch out. Oh, I got to add this to my brush. Wait a minute. I can't leave this. I also have some, some jagged edges I have to clean up. It's, it was really hard cutting with without another guide hand. I'm still, I'm able to use my, my left hand, but not much. My left arm, limited motion. So my cutting was a little bit off. So I think I'm gonna try cleaning it up here with these clippers. I should be able to do that. Let's see. Like this one was definitely jagged. So I'm gonna give it a, a quick, cut here and I'm going to angle it. That's better. Some of these I can't get to, but all right, now I'm done. And clean all this up. We'll add that to the brush pile for cleanup later. I think I'll pick up this rake because I know, I think Ben might be done for the day. I'm just gonna put it here with the brush pile so we don't misplace it. Ooh. I was looking at these also. They did not make the winter. Now we still have some green along the bottom. So I'm going to consider just trimming these down, but these got just a lot of wind burn, I'm, I'm guessing. Um, don't know if they were just maybe planted last year. They might not have got enough water, I'm not sure. So I did hire a consultant to come out. She's actually coming out tomorrow and hopefully she'll answer some questions for me. You know, I've got a good knowledge base of a lot of gardening, but when it comes to what should I do about these? I don't know. If it was me, I would probably just cut them down and see if I could get them to regrow, which is my my first guess. And then we discussed about taking out these boxwoods. But when I sit on the, the step there, it really is pretty from within. So I'm almost wondering if I could start slowly shortening it and narrowing it if that makes sense, just so it's not so overwhelming. But if I go too fast, we'll have a lot of bare branches, which might be the way to go to start. But this will be another thing I'm going to ask this landscape designer and architect, can these be saved? Because like I said, it's really nice from inside. Let's, 
Let's go in and do this while the sun's out. Let me just turn around here. I'm gonna sit down on my, my stoop. But it's so pretty in here. And the other day, it was kind of blustery out. And when I'm sitting, these do block the wind. And we're thinking of maybe putting a couple Adirondack chairs out here. But now I can envision why they had a, a porch here. But I'm guessing it overwhelmed the house, the size of this patio. But somebody didn't like it and took it down. I'm glad they left the patio, though. This brick walkway is also coming up. I just don't want to touch it until we're ready to go. And I have another hardscape designer coming out. We're going to discuss if these can be reused somehow or what we'll do with them. I'm almost envisioning a beautiful stone that we can use for, for this path. But I think it's time I'm going to clean up now. I can get back to all this mess tomorrow morning, I think. I don't know what the weather's going to be. We're discussing if we take out the Ford to the restaurant today. He does. Ben doesn't want to take it out in the rain, which I totally get. So we're, wait, we're watching the weather. So what we're doing right now is just taking down the wall, putting all the small rocks in a pile and see if we can save this gate and we'll rebuild it with the large stones at the bottom as much as we can. Well, this isn't an architectural, or I'm sorry, archeological find, but we have a granite countertop here too. And I know I've shown this last year. There's a stone here that says Chloe found out recently that there was a cat buried somewhere here at the front of the house. We're thinking of putting stone here in the wall. Um, what are your thoughts? It's kind of loosen up that rubber. Well, it's giving you enough, huh? Not the best. Okay. 